We're at the ID at Xbox showcase here in San Francisco for GDC, and we're taking a look at Rockfish's uh, new game called Everspace. And well, tell us what what is Everspace? <laughs> Everspace is a roguelike space shooter, bringing AAA visuals to this roguelike genre. And on top of that, we have a non-linear story, which is also kind of unusual for a roguelike game. Um, we have very um, intuitive, uh, excessive controls because we have shooter controls, so we're not talking about Newton physics and also the whole presentation of the game, like the space is very colorful, very vibrant, so we're not talking about black and bleak space, so it's, it's fantasy space if you want to call it like that, and um, all the levels are procedurally generated. And um, yeah, so we fly around, uh, look for resources, and at the very beginning we don't tell you who you are, what your final objective is, you have to find that out yourself. Every time you die, there will be short cutscenes uh, like memory flashbacks that unveil parts of the story. So you have to die to progress. Yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, let's let's get get into the game here. Uh, what's your objective here? So my objective right now is you fight off the enemy. So you see the indicator here. I uh, got a t uh, target locked on, and um, we can send uh, secondary weapons like missiles. And now you watch him explode in slow mo. Nice. You collect his uh, the leftovers here because I will use those resources and fuel uh, upgrades later on to travel or to upgrade my ship or fix damage um, if I got hit heavily. Well, talking about being hit, there is another one. And you see I've got uh, a laser weapon right now. I took down his shield. Now I switched the weapon to the Gatling because the Gatling um, deals greater damage to the hull. So there's also a strategic component, what kind of weapon you're using. It's not simply about, uh, just about firepower. Can you change out the weaponry yes, and so on? Yeah. So that's, that's D-pad, right now we just have the Gatling and the laser installed. There are up to eight weapons um, and you can upgrade, the, upgrade these as well. But we also have, uh, like the secondary weapons will be rockets, uh, homing missiles, we got uh, devices like a cloak device, shields obviously, but uh, consumables as well, like a scanning probe that tells you where uh, precious resources. Let me get rid of that drone here. But seeing as it's a, a roguelike, I guess you're not you're gonna start out with the with the sort of the basic, and then hopefully unlock and find the new exactly. better stuff. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, we also have three ships. So this is the middle class, is the fighter. We also will have a scout, which is like faster, more agile, less armor, less shields. And then um, there's a, going to be a bigger one that's more for resources, heavily armed and uh, strong weaponry as well. Um, that's something you pick when you start your run? Or? We haven't decided yet when you will unlock uh, those uh, ships. Um, in the beginning you will most likely will start with one because it's just too much uh, if we provide uh, the whole range of the ships. Um, you will start though um, at the same point. So you will start at a carrier where all those ships are coming in a, in a hangar. And every time you die and you invest your um, the credits that you made on your run and the blueprints that you correct, uh, collected, you can use those while uh, you are at the hangar before you fly out to upgrade your ship accordingly. During a run, you can always um, repair uh, your, uh, your gear if you, got, if you got damaged. Right now, everything is fixed, it's fine. We got uh, seven components that we can see here. Um, like the primary weapons obviously can take damage. The engine makes you slower if it gets damaged. Uh, the sensors, for instance, you don't have uh, the, uh, the, um, what is, um, the feedback, you, you don't see the HUD anymore, those kind of things. And then it's a strategic uh, question for you, where do you uh, invest your resources into repairing or upgrading your equipment? Uh, we also got first person view, as you can see. You can switch uh, Neat. Uh, view anytime. And the PC version will also support VR for Oculus Rift and HTC Vive. I'm more a fan of a third person, though I'm really, yeah, that's my Galaxy Fire roots here. Uh, <laughs> all right, so um, then you see this uh, turning thingy here. Yeah. They, these are my jump drive uh, coordinates, so that takes me to the next destination here. You just aim for that a little while. So that's just uh, placeholder graphics here. You can pick your destination. So you pick the path that you're taking exactly. yourself. Yeah, and uh, depending on the quality of your sensors, you will pr uh, get more information, what kind of resources, enemy threat level to be expected in a certain location. 
So in here you see, uh, this is the jump gate. That takes you to the next uh, star system. So that's for interstellar travel and the jump, uh, jump gate. But before that, we still have a bit things to do here. Almost done. Yeah, almost done. Okay, you see sometimes uh, I cannot shoot. That's because all my energy was used. But now we got him, and yes. That's a nice capture here. And again, all the, the backgrounds you see, everything is procedurally generated. Um, that means the, the experience uh, is different for, for every playthrough, for every player. Is everything you encounter is uh, an enemy or will there also be like friendly encounters? Yes, there will be uh, friendly encounters as well, like uh, freighters that are protected. And if you attack them, obviously they will turn hostile. But we also will have archetype characters, like Seducer, uh, Shifter. There are, I think, seven or eight archetypes that you meet next to the main characters with their own story arc. What kind of scope is there for uh, for run? What sort of what what sort of play time are you a aiming for? Yeah. Say or size of the the. So a run can take anywhere from like just a minute or so when you got killed immediately, all the way to like five ten minutes, maybe twenty. Um, to complete the game story-wise, like the campaign, that takes somewhere between 10 and 20 hours. That's what we're aiming for. After that, after this uh, major event at the end of the game, still the game is open, you can unlock achievements. We have a couple ideas what we can do after you finish the game, later on at DLCs, add more content and more story and such. So a lot of things can come later. I mean, that's the beauty about a digital game, to upload it and add more stuff. So uh, we talked a little bit prior to, to sitting down and, and you mentioned you're from from fish labs originally yeah. uh, obviously you built the big big sci-fi universe with that game yeah. with those games galaxy on fire uh, is that something are you building a universe here as well and sort of the fiction and well I mean the lore is definitely something that we are heavily investing into and um, of course we have great ideas what we can add in everspace 2 and 3 and so on so ideally we have the kind of success we had with Galaxy on Fire, but now on PC and console. And to a certain degree, it's kind of ironic that mobile was the was the step for us to enter the video games industry. And then we did that for 11 years, and then simply free to play happened. And we're not free to play guys. I know it, it works for some, but for us it doesn't. And the core team really hated it. And now we're so relieved that we can do a premium game, just f uh, concentrate on making a good game. Don't worry about the monetization and such. And um, yeah, finally we had PC on console. I mean, uh, this is um, that's what we always wanted to do. And where are you at in development right now, and, and sort of what's the roadmap ahead? Um, so it's pre-alpha right now, and uh, we were planning to have the alpha ready in March. Probably have to push it back a little, um, and then the beta is scheduled for summer. And after beta, then in uh, in August, we want to do a preview program. And the release would be end of the year. It, we may push it to early next year because end of the year is very competitive. It all depends on financial situation. If you find more money to raise, maybe you get a distribution deal. And then the distributor says, well, guys, forget it. We're not going to launch in November. We launch in February 2017, possibly. Yeah. Thank you so much. for. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Okay.